All right, today I'm going to show you how to set up sites in Virgil. Uh, I have two sites here. I have a training site and my Yadadoc site. We're going to go ahead and set up a new site in our sites dashboard. I'm going to call this training. I'm going to put in the URL, um, put in my username and password. Uh, we want to choose our configuration. I'm going to set it up for sending and receiving cloud snapshots from this site. And I want to check the box that says automatically create syncs. That this will automatically create your incoming and outgoing syncs for this site. Um, sync statistics. I usually do send and receive statistics from this site. This will send your um, server information between the two sites so that from yeah, doc, I can look at um, my training site and see you know how many servers I have and uh, if there's any errors or logs and information like that. And then we have some statistics, uh, intervals and retention periods that you can set here. I'm just going to leave those as default. Machine management will allow me to manage uh, the machines on either site. So we can do allow by direct directional management of machines. I can tell it to just this site can manage my machines or I can manage this site's machines. And I usually do bi-directional for both, just gives you the option. Uh, and then we have our repair server feature, which allows these um, sites to act as repair servers for each other. So in the case of, of data being missing or lost um, due to a hardware failure, you can re you know, live you get data from your other site. Um, so I usually uh, will set, highly recommend setting up a repair server. And then we're going to hit submit. It's authenticating with my training server right now. And there we go. It's connected and it's green and it's idle. And we can see that we pulled some information from our site. We have two VMs and tenants and networks. We have our logs, storage information, RAM information, all that got pulled over. And it automatically created an incoming and an outgoing sync for the site, as well as automatically set up a site on the other side as well. So on my training side, I have a Yadadoc server, and this is all set up and configured, ready to go um, automatically. Um, and so for our first thing we want to do is um, we're going to send a sync from uh, this site to training. So if I go to my outgoing syncs, I'm going to add. So this is just like a one time snapshot queue. Um, if I wanted to set this up for recurring, you know, sending of snapshots, I would set up a, a new auto sync. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to add a cloud snapshot to the queue. And here we have um, the snapshot that you want to send. So I'm just going to pick like the latest one. Uh, we get to determine our retention period for this snapshot on the remote side. So I'm sending my uh, snapshot, this daily snapshot to the training site. And I'm going to retain it for three days um, for each of the snapshots that, that I send. You can set a priority and you can even tell it to never expire the snapshot. Um, and then I always use usually put a prefix on here. Um, it will automatically add an underscore to the name that will uh, show up. So to basically it'll on the remote side, on the training side, it'll say yada doc underscore daily underscore and the date. Um, that way, when you're on the training site, um, there's a checkbox that says it's a remote snapshot, but it's a lot easier to see in the cloud snapshot view when there's a prefix on there. So I'm going to hit submit. <clears throat> it says it's going to send it immediately. Hit OK. And it's syncing. We can see down here it's syncing. And we're sending data back and forth. So it's going to send uh, the entire snapshot over to the training site. And we should be able to see here that we have an incoming uh, site, an incoming sync coming in. Um, so that's your, your basics on how to set up a site to site connection. Um, there's a lot more that goes into this. Um, what I want to get into now is 
some troubleshooting of the site sinks. Um, a couple of things that need to happen when you're setting up a site to site sink. Um, we have to, we, there's a few rules that uh, are not enabled by default in order for this to work. Um, so if we go to our, our home and go to networks, and then we go to our external networks, and then external, and then we go to rules. There is a system rule for allowing the uh, vSAN to work. Um, you can see that here it is a um, it's port fourteen two hundred one. It's it has to be translated for incoming. This is um, automatically created by default in uh, the latest version of Verge IO. Um, but it is disabled by default. So if yours is disabled, you just come here and enable it. And then you apply your rules afterwards, and then that will allow that traffic to come through external. Um, <clears throat> the traffic also has to go through the to the core network on the receiving side. Um, I did set this up for bi-directional uh, syncing so that this you know both sites can send snapshots to each other. So I want to go to all networks here, and then go to our core network, and then go to rules. And in here as well, we have the vSAN uh, rule that is enabled now, but by default, it, it should automatically be there. If not, um, you can create it using the settings here. Um, and then uh, usually by default, it's disabled, so you can enable it. And if, if you don't have it, you can create it using these rules. Um, and so you want to do that on both sides. So I also want to go in the training site and do the same thing, go to externals view my external, view my rules, and then I should have a vSAN, there it is right there, a vSAN port, and that will uh, allow that. And then on the core as well, we have a rule, and we have that vSAN rule. So that checks out. So um, only the the receiving side needs to have this rule because you're writing to the vSAN and that's why we call this rule like vSAN sync because we're writing uh from the other site to the vSAN on this the receiving site so this being the receiving site um we're doing bi-directional which means we're sending to here as well as sending back so we have to make sure we did it on both ends another another setting that can um help before you configure your uh, site sync is if you go to systems and then you go to settings on the right we have our connection um, uh, section here and you want to make sure that this is accurate because this is um, where the site sync will automatically pull the information from here and if this isn't configured or if you have like a public ip address here um, and then you have a local IP here, it could cause some issues. So you can just hit edit on the left here and just make sure that that these are correct. Like if you have uh, a local IP here or a local subnet here, um, you want to make sure that the vSAN host is also that as well. Um, another, another thing as well, if you're connecting to a tenant on the remote side, you will want this vSAN host needs to be the IP or URL for the the root uh, Verge OS. You can't connect to the uh, tenant's URL uh, for the vSAN because you have to write it to the root of the of the system. Um, and so then we just check that setting on on both ends before you create your your sync. Um, and if I go to settings, yep. So that looks good there, and then we should be good. Um, so our our site sync is set up and, and working here. Um, another thing to pay attention to is, uh, you know, this there's there's multiple settings when it comes to sites. You have um, your your connection for like this basically for the statistics. This is your connection for that. Um, and I can hit edit on the left and I can you know, modify these settings. I can change the, you know, the vSAN host. 
Um, you can check to, you know, if you're using IP addresses, you can check to allow insecure SSL. And then you have the option to re-authenticate. So anytime I make a change here, you know, you want to re-authenticate so that it um, tries to connect again. Um, and so that's for the, the site sync or for the um, statistics, but for the site sync itself, it does create a separate incoming and outgoing sync. Um, and so you can check those settings here. So for the outgoing sync, if I double click on that, um, you'll see here, this is my settings. And so I can edit this and change, you know, if this is incorrect, if this has like a public IP instead of a private, um, I can change it here and, and reapply it. Um, same goes for the, the incoming sync as well has uh the settings as well um so you can see here the vsan and url host um and anytime you make a change to the incoming side you want to regenerate your code and then go to the other site and then when we go to the um incoming syncs or actually it would be outgoing in this case outgoing syncs we're gonna um, just when we when we regenerate that code, we're gonna hit re-register and paste in the code, um, and that's only if you're changing it. Uh, typically, when you're trying to figure out something that's going on where the sites aren't working, uh, I try I usually default to uh, just deleting the site completely on both sides. You come to you come here, you delete the site, and then you you come to the other side, you delete the site here. And then you mess with your settings in the system settings and you mess with your firewall rules and then you try to add the site new because it because there's so many like sub settings with your incoming and outgoing syncs it's easier just to have it recreate it all once you have your settings correct recreate it all and then a lot of times that'll fix most of your issues if you guys have any other questions you can email support at verge.io thank you for your time